So let's get into talking about radio link and how it is applicable. Sometimes wire devices are just not appropriate or feasible. A working knowledge of the wireless radio link solution will expand your opportunities in ways that you can install more Vantage systems, get more projects. So let's talk about our objectives as we go over Radiolink. We're going to talk about the purpose of it, its characteristics, and then we'll discuss different Radiolink stations. We'll talk about the range and the quantity specifications involving Radiolink, and we'll discuss the factors that affect Radiolink and how to increase the range and the size limits of the Radiolink system. And then in the end, we will add Radiolink station to Design Center, and then we'll go through and we'll connect and we'll configure uh, and program the antenna and the stations into the system. So let's jump into it. Radiolink characteristics. Uh, Two-way wireless control with feedback. So we use the 900 megahertz uh, FM spread spectrum frequency. It's a one-to-many topology. So the Radiolink enabler connects to the controller serial port and then the radio link stations within range of that enabler or antenna communicate one to one of that antenna. So that way Vantage's uh, dimmers that are out and about and devices and stations that are out can communicate quickly to the uh, antenna. The programming with inside the controller can then spit back out and say go and do this scene and then it communicates to the different devices. So you don't have delays or latency, for example, when I set a scene in a great room that's got eight or ten different lighting loads, I press the button and the lights all change simultaneously, no popcorn effect, very smooth application with the Vantage uh, radio link characteristics of this antenna. So let's look about connectivity. It is an RS-232 connection. Um, we have five RS-232 ports on the Infusion Controller uh, terminal board. You'll notice that the first position and the second position has uh, a, a couple additional termination pieces, the RTS and the uh, CTS connections. Um, with the uh, RS-232 connection for the enabler, you can utilize um, the RTS as well, but in recent years here at Vantage, we've made changes to the enabler though and allows you to connect it up with just your TX, RX, ground, and power. And so any of the five uh, ports are available. Now, the first port is the main one we would recommend just because it's right next to the power connection of a 12 volt, which will power up the one enabler. That just makes it more convenient for wiring, um, but any of the five will work. So let's look at Radiolink stations. Notice from the picture of the Vantage objects, you'll see that we have quite a number of stations uh, that are capable of being used in a Radiolink project. Um, dimmers and relays and blind controls and RS-232 stations, thermostats and so forth, uh, contact input stations and uh, low voltage relays are just a few of the uh, radio link stations that you can use um, in a radio link system. So what about placement? Well, you, as you see from the graph here, you have a 200 foot diameter, so a 100 foot radius from the one antenna. You have a 30 foot maximum from the controller to the antenna. So as you can see from this diagram, I've got a infusion controller uh, with a antenna that is attached to it within that 30 foot range getting it uh, separation and then allowing me to cover uh, the majority of this specific house. Now I do have the ability to have up to 60 stations um, per antenna that I have so each enabler allows me to have 60 stations. Let's look at some of the possible issues that you run into. One of those issues or problems with a wireless type of system is interference. So ham radio, airport uh, RF signals both reside on the 900 uh, frequency along with the 900 megahertz phones. Um, and some of the older and even some of the new uh, current release wireless intercom and security devices are starting to use uh, the 300 and 900 megahertz range. So you need to know about those so that there can be some possible uh, interference issues that you'll have to manage and work with. 
Um, some of the other problems you have will be with attenuation. You've got metal in walls. You have mirrors and water features and hydronic, which is water in floor heating, that creates a problem for the radio signal to be able to pass through those things. Even heavy earthen materials, large rocks, bricks on structures and things like that can cause problems allowing a uh, radio signal to get through, which is the same sort of problems you run into with like your wireless internet or anything that tries to use a wireless technology. So let's talk about the ideal placement for the enabler. As you can see from this graph, up high so that you can have an umbrella effect with the enabler is going to be the best scenario. Um, we do have a 200 foot uh, diameter that we list there, but as you put that up high, you get some longer ranges and better distances with that. And so 200 foot is a conservative distance. We have seen projects that cover a much larger area within that. And so if you've got some uh, challenges that you're looking at, uh, putting a project on, go ahead and try it out. See if you're able to make that connection and have a good stable connection with it. Depending on what the attenuation or interference may be, you may get much larger than the 200 uh, foot radius. Also with placement of the antenna, keep in mind that these antennas are designed to be placed vertically. By placing them horizontally, you are creating less of a range. Also notice in this picture, where did we place the antenna? As far away as we could from problems such as the metal uh, and the high voltage wiring and things like that that can cause interference issues and uh, attenuation issues. What if I've got a much larger home that a single antenna cannot cover in that 200 feet? Well, you add a second enabler. Now keep in mind I do have to have an external power supply. Uh, the one 12 volt uh, power uh, connection on the infusion terminal board only can power up the one enabler. So if I'm going to have a second enabler, I do want that external power supply. Um, what if I, I can add additional controllers if I need to uh, have the wiring farther than 30 feet away? And keep in mind that one controller can handle two enablers, so that gives me 120 stations total per controller that is added. So I can have multiple controllers um, running the system. So with two RF enablers being used on one infusion controller, you would wire it thus. With the connections being done to the power supply, the VFA008 is Vantage's 12-volt uh, power supply that will cover the power requirements for those two enablers. Then you would utilize your TX and RX um, and then tie in the ground to that power supply um, so that you do not have any ground loop issues and noise that can be caused by having multiple different power supplies. So once again, recommended if you have a second enabler, use the single power supply for both of those enablers. And then, as mentioned a little bit earlier, here's a graph to describe this. If I have a much larger home that I need to cover, I can have two infusion controllers on both ends or both areas of the house with multiple antennas being able to cover it and have great coverage uh, of any size of structure with the RF enabler. So let's go ahead and take a look at Design Center. I'm just going to come over here to a scene point dimmer station, double click on that and bring that into the file and notice that it just looks identical to any station uh, low voltage keypad or uh, regular scene point dimmer, wired radio link, or low voltage keypad. Now, something I want to show you here is under bus view here on the left hand side, you'll notice that now that I've added one scene point dimmer that is radio link, it will automatically add me a uh, radio link enabler antenna and it puts it on the first port that's available. So I can make adjustments to that if that is not the port that I want that on. I can come to the uh, drop down menu on that antenna and then select whichever port that I'm going to wire that into. Um, here with the drop down, I'm going to go ahead and leave that on one because in the demonstration here in a minute, I'll show you I can make that change. Uh, something to note of that's really nice if I do have a, for example, let's say I have a scene point dimmer designed up in the house, it's wire link, but then I've lost. 
the station bus. Something's happened to it, it's got cut. I don't have station bus there. If I add the enabler, then I can just go ahead and even if I've got all the programming and everything taken care of, the load assignments, all of those things are taken care of with that scene point dimmer. If it has a companion that is radio link, I can take that device, drag it over into the antenna and it will turn it into a scene point dimmer radio link that has all of the programming labels and everything carrying with it. One thing I'd like to point out here also is with additional antennas. Notice that the station talks to the specific antenna that it is assigned to. So in this scenario, you'll see that this scene point dimmer will be talking to the port one antenna. So if I've got those spread apart, and so I've got 60 feet difference between those two, and I've got some attenuation issues, I'm having some issues with a controller, uh, some, maybe some RF interference with a 900 megahertz phone or something, I can simply change which antenna that that is looking at and see if that helps fix my problem before I need to go into the cost and expense of adding additional controllers and antennas on the other side of the house. So that's one of the options that you can do to try to overcome the interference issues. So let's take a look at the wiring of this uh, RF enabler first off. Notice I only have the four conductors that are connected up. I'm just utilizing the power and ground and then the RX and TX and that is wired into the radio link enabler. I'm going to go ahead and now set the controller back into position and power that up. Now that's powered up, I'm going to go ahead and make a connection to it with this file that I've created that has all of these uh, stations over here connected up to it. And I'm going to put that into configuration mode just like I do with a wire link station. And in a few moments, these stations will begin to flash for us. You'll notice on the controller here, there is now an E for the enabler and there will, it will flash as the uh, antenna begins to communicate. This can take up to about a minute. Notice that the R number now is counting up and it sees all of these stations. It's a little hard to see because of the light in here, but all of these stations have begun to flash for us. Now, most stations uh, of the radio link stations can still take the normal three button press and configure. The uh, accent point two here is one that I do need to manually enter in this serial number. But I'm going to go ahead and then the software. I'll just start with the top station on my software. Three button press. Gets that station, goes to the next one. I'll come back to the accent point here in a moment. Or let's just go ahead and add that number here. Now that I have all my serial numbers in there, I take it out of configuration mode. You can do an update or a full program, push that across. Once that's complete, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute for all those stations to communicate with the antenna. The antenna begins to flash. Notice my R starts to add up over here. And it is now communicating with my stations. So that is how you configure Radiolink stations.